Hey there, this is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. In this video, I'm gonna share some music production tips while recreating Sacrifice by The Weeknd. Now, there's a lot of cool nuances that go on throughout the whole video, so I would encourage you to watch to the end so you can use some of the tips that I'm sharing in your projects. So, let me go ahead and show you what the finished product sounds like. <laughs> So let's start by creating the main riff that we hear at the beginning of the song going throughout the song as well. Now, a big helpful tool to kind of get closer in the ballpark with sound that you're trying to emulate or look for is really just to visualize that sound. Like, what do you what do you see when you hear it? And I, I first thing that came to mind was literally like a bass guitar going through some distortion, some wah-wah pedal. Um, so that's what I started with. Now, it, initially I was like, oh, I could use a synth to recreate that, but I wanna kinda of go with my gut feeling. So I'm gonna use IK Multimedia's Moto Bass, and I'm going with a 70s J Bass. Now thinking this is a very disco-ish type of vibe on the track, so more, more or less we're gonna aim for these type of basses. Now what's important is I'm choosing instead of the finger to a pick, and the muting. The muting plays a big part in capturing the performance that I'm looking for. So if we just go ahead and play the notes here. All right, so that's uh, that that muting does play a big role because without it, you have just more of the, the, the strings just tend to be a lot looser. So we mute that and it's gonna get a lot more tighter. And that's it for, for the actual patch and the preset there. Now I'm gonna use Ableton Live's pedal plugin to add a bit of overdrive distortion. But be sure to have the sub enabled so any of that low end goes through as well. Now to give it that, that wah-wah sense of, uh, or that kind of like, that underwater distortion type of sound, uh, I'm using Guitar Rig for that and I'm using a format filter. This is what really creates that type of sound uh, in combination with a bass amp and cabinet. So this is more or less just kind of dialing in um, and finding the right type of texture here. So I'm going to move the talk knob up and down and you'll see what that does to the bass sound. That can also be something cool to automate where you're having the talk knob go up and down, but I found a good place to have it there, and I gave a little bit more gain and drive on the actual amp itself. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and EQ this. Now the purpose of this EQ is to really just define any certain frequencies as I go back and forth to the reference, um, really to kind of just carve out or boost. And EQ is such a powerful tool when it comes to shaping the overall tone of the sound that you're trying to create. And then I'm going to place a chorus effect on that and really accentuate this. This is what's gonna give a lot of the width uh, for this sound. Now, I'm using the low pass option here, and I'm making sure I have it set to, you know, just covering a lot of the low mids. I don't want the lows to uh, be swept away with the chorus. And I'm extending the width a little bit, as you can see here, by 181%. Then I'm just messing around with the rate and a mount knob until I found a sweet spot that I was really happy with. And the warmth is just adding a little bit more saturation and output uh, through the plugin. Then I have a compressor just to make sure that any other uh, dynamics or the loud notes that just kind of resonate and jump out can be controlled. Now we're gonna do some sidechain here 
And since the kick pattern isn't always just a four on the floor, I decided to go with the Nigga Romero kickstart so that there's always a consistent uh, pulsing sidechain happening to the bass. <laughs> Now, there was a sense of more of like a muted guitar type of thing. So I wasn't sure if it was just the bass or the guitar. So let's just combine the two. All right, so for the muted guitar part that I wanna layer with the bass, I'm gonna use Native Instruments Electric Sunburst. And we're gonna use the deluxe version that has the melody option so that we can play the melody. And I'm make sure that it's set to muted. We want a muted guitar, right? So let's go ahead and drag the same rift by holding Option dragging that down, and we wanna eliminate that B1 note because it's out of the register of the electric guitar, and that will also reconfigure the muting settings. So we're just gonna leave it like this. Cool. Now I'll get a, I'll grab a couple of the similar features that we are using here for the bass, such as the guitar rig. I'll go ahead and drag that over, so I'm holding Option to copy the same setting. But instead of the Bass Pro, let's go ahead and eliminate that and put a different type of amp here. So I'll use the AC box and see what that gives us. And I'm just gonna change the format filter a little bit so I get more of the higher register of the muting. Now let's thin this out with an EQ. So I'm gonna go EQ8 and take away some of that low end. Yeah, that's, that's what we're looking for. And we'll widen this up a little bit as well. So we're gonna use another chorus. Let's see what that sounds like layered with the bass. And I'll copy the same side chain here, right over to the guitar. I might actually just group these two, that would be better here, and just take that side chain place the side chain on the group. And I'll take it away from uh, the bass as well. So, because it's, it's essentially going to be side chaining both anyways. Now there's an accent that I'm hearing with the bass note, like just something that can accent that. All right, so let's take the bass riff, the first one we have, drag that down here to a new MIDI track. And let's just eliminate all the other notes except that bottom B1 because that's what I want to accent, all right? So now that I've got that there, duplicate that a couple times, and let's use Ableton Live's wavetable, or two or more oscillator synths. If you're using silence, serum, you could easily follow along because we're just gonna use one oscillator set to our sawtooth there. And let's solo this. So set that to from polyphonic to monophonic and bring the release of the amp envelope so that once the note finishes playing, it will just stop. Okay, we want a nice short note. And then go to your matrix and then go ahead, click filter frequency because we wanna map the cutoff over to our envelope too. So let's just go ahead and crank this and lower our frequency cutoff. And then heading over here to envelope two, we can now shape the envelope for the filter uh, cutoff. Bring a little bit of resonance so we get some peak there. And let's go and take this a whole octave lower. So right where it says semitone, hit minus 12. I might wanna open up the decay a little bit. So I'm bringing the frequency down so it's not so evident, but it's just more felt than heard. And now with all the elements kind of grouped up together, I'm gonna to use some over-the-top compression here using Slate Digital's MOTT. I was actually just checking it out and it does a good job of just giving a little bit of more hype here. And then an EQ after that to give a little bit more shaping. Now, this EQ is gonna, the decision behind which, you know, what to boost or what to cut really is gonna come from the context 
of adding more to this riff, as such as the drums, the uh, the pads, and things like that. So I'm going to keep it here, and if I need to adjust and carve the, and shape the sound a little bit more later on, I will. But then now we're going to saturate it to give it a little bit more um, edge, and there we go with the riff. All right, now let's go ahead and focus on the drums. Now I want to just take this moment to spotlight a good friend of mine, Austin, from Make Pop Music, who was kind enough to send over a sample pack loaded with sounds, uh, kicks, snares, claps, and things like that, that were inspired by this weekend album. So I told him, hey, I'm going to do a breakdown. He says, let me just send you some of the sounds. Hopefully you use them. And so I am. So definitely check out Make Pop Music. YouTube's channel is amazing. And visit the website for more sound packs. So here I'm going to borrow a, a, a kick and snare from his Dawn sample pack. And we have a hi-hat here. Um, but there's a couple cool nuances I want to show you uh, that are, you know, really just undetected somewhat in the programming. So here we have a basic beat. We have our kick and snare and hi-hat pattern. Now we have this closed hi hat or this open hi hat that happens at the initial hit here but i you know i have just this hi hat that i'm working with so i'm going to show you a cool trick how you can kind of fake an open hi hat from a closed hi hat so i'm going to start by just holding the option key dragging this closed hi hat to any other empty cell here i'll i'll choose a2 and they are exactly the same and i'm going to rename this one as long or it could be open whatever and I'm simply just going to go into the classic mode here in the simpler and hit warp and make sure to choose complex pro. And just by warping the sound, you've already extended the length of it. So they're already in different length. So let's go ahead and create our pattern here. So we have that long one playing here. So you can see it has that right? I can go ahead here and just raise the volume of the open eye and that's going to accent it a little bit more. Now, why did, why did I do this instead of just go hunting for an open hi-hat? Well, I wanted the open hi-hat, uh, you know, rather than spending hours of combing through different open hi-hats that don't really match the timber or the type of sound as the closed hi-hat, this could be a viable option as well. All right, so we have just a straight ahead kick snare hi-hat pattern here that I'm using as a loop. I'm going to use the EQ to just take away some of the low end. Well, a lot of the low end. And then I'm using this erosion uh, plugin by Ableton Live to add some noise to the pattern. and then a little bit of redux. It almost sounds like these plugins are kind of similarly doing the same thing. Nice little grit there from the loop, and I'm gonna go ahead and put these together. That'd be extremely helpful, especially in that chorus section there. Now let's go ahead and group these two up together, and this will be our drum bus. I'm gonna do some processing for these two. So I'm going to start by using Ableton Live's Drum Bus plugin. And it's a great plugin because there's a lot of the tools I'm going to end up using are all in one. So I'll head over here to the drive and color, drag and drop the drum bus. And if you're curious as to how you can somewhat replicate the Drum Bus plugin in Ableton Live, and if you're using Logic, check some of the videos in my channel. I cover exactly how to do that. So let's go ahead and just mess around with some of the settings till I get it to right where I want it. That's cool right there. This is without it. So that's that's really nice there. And I'll, let's use an EQ just to color this up a little bit. little bit.
And now I just want to go ahead and just glue, use the glue compressor just to tighten this up a little and, I, and set this up and just. And then let's use, uh, I'll use a Redux here. I'm going to use a Redux. And the reason for that is because I want to, I want to add some grittiness to that at the end here. And the transient shape here on the drum bus is really good. We can turn it to the left and that's going to make it a little bit more staccato, a little bit more shorter from each transient point. And if we go to the right, it's going to add more sustain. So that reverb really becomes noticeable there. So depends. Do you want more of that reverb tail from the snare? Or do you want less? That's going to all be a personal preference here. Now, let's see what that sounds like together with the riff. All right, so I'm going to start with the piano chords. And for this, I'm going to be using Exxon Audio's Addictive Keys, just using the modern upright and the basic modern upright preset. Sounds great. And let's just take a look at the chords here. All right. Once I got that, I want to widen up the sound a little bit. So I'm going to use the chorus plugin to do that. And the Redux. Now, the Redux is such a great tool when trying to replicate, you know, anything in this type of genre. Because you, what you're doing is you're degrading a little bit the quality of the audio. So it's got a vintage type of vibe to it. And it adds the grain and grit. Just got to be careful with the piano sound. When you lower the rate, um, it'll be, you know, really noticeable. So I just want a little hint of that there. Then I've got a compressor, and this is going to be set to sidechain. And so I have it sidechained to the actual drum bus. So the overall groove from the drums will be triggering and creating a pulse with the piano. And notice that I have set here the EQ so that it just really, anything from uh, 216 hertz and below will be the uh, source of the sidechain. Now, why not just pick the kick? Well, because there's going to be a little, you know, whatever little nuances creep into that frequency, I also want it to trigger as well. All right, next, we're going to layer the piano with some really cool pads. And immediately when I listen to the reference, I'm thinking, you know, either Juno 60 or Juno 106, definitely in the Juno type of vibe. It's got a very distinct and unique type of sound. So I'm using Arteria's Juno, uh, the June 6V. And what I'm going to do here is let's go to a new preset so I can kind of walk you through how I created the sound from scratch. So let's listen to just the pads the way they are now. All right, so let's go ahead and configure this. Let's add a little bit of the sub frequency here and turn the sub on. And a little bit of white noise that gives a nice airiness to the top. And then the high pass filter, let's put that up to shave some of that low end away. But now we need to bring the filter frequency down and let's put the resonance up a little bit. Now using our envelope will allow us to let that open. And we shape the envelope here in this section. So let's just move this around to get a nice vibe. Opening that release really makes a nice difference there. And add some chorus here to widen that up. And one thing to keep in mind with this is the more you accent the, you know, the, the longer the attack takes for the envelope to react, the more of a swell you get. So we don't want too much of a swell. It did have a brassy type of thing, so I don't want too much of an attack. That's cool. I got that initial boom. That's what I want. 
Now the LFO over here is really cool because this is going to modulate the pitch. And then just a little bit of that and then lower the rate of that LFO here. Now what's cool is they have under the hood here in the advanced section, some more options to add some effects. So let's go and add some reverb. And a little bit of delay, we'll sync this up to a quarter note. All right, now let's see what that sounds like with the piano and the riff. So it's a little too much filter frequency, so I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. Now there's a really cool deep moogish type of bass that's happening. It's got this nice little sweet to it, right? And I know I sound like a walrus imploding, but um, yeah, let's go ahead and recreate that. That's gonna be really helpful to make the pads full here. So for this, I'm gonna use Ableton Live's wavetable, just drag and drop that there. And let's go ahead and set it to a sawtooth. And let's check out the notes here. So you hear that overlap. Let's get rid of that by going from polyphonic to mono. And let's go to our envelope and route the filter frequency to our matrix. So right here, filter frequency envelope two. Now the key here is going to be our resonance. That's what creates that nice initial growl. All right, and then let's go ahead and go to our second envelope here and just shape that. So we'll bring the decay a little bit down, uh, lower, you know, slow down the decay and bring the sustain down. And now let's go and take this a whole octave lower. So negative 12 semitones. And we'll go ahead and set a second oscillator, leave that a regular octave and lower this down. And I'll just detune the second oscillator just a little bit. Okay, I wanna go back and maybe do a little bit more tweaking here. Go to the envelope and just dial in the right setting here. Now, just one thing to keep in mind, the more decay time, the longer it takes for that, that resonance to come back down. So you get a longer growl with more decay. So listen to it with the rest of the music, start tweaking till you get the right, uh, the right opening and you know the right timing with all that. And we can open it up a little bit more with some chorus. So let's go ahead and do that. Put the chorus delay here, um, well, the chorus plugin. And we'll send some reverb. So I have a, a room reverb here on return track B. but I don't want any of the low end to be captured with the reverb. So I'll just put an EQ before that. Very cool. Now I'm gonna boost up the pads by layering them with another sound here. So I've got another Arteria plugin, the OB uh, XAV, and just browsing through some strings. Just needed some basic lush string patches here. Now that's gonna layer with the keys here. And then there's a cool, just sustained high pitch string that's really dominant in a lot of disco records. So I'm using the Selena um, plugin here by Arturia as well. And this is just sustaining the one string. You could use any string patch to do this.
Now, on my return track uh, C, I have a flanger plugin. This is the BL20 from Arteria. Uh, it comes loaded with their effects collection. Really digging this flanger plugin. And so I have that set to C, and what I'm doing is I'm gonna sign a little bit of the Juno pad over to that, and we can automate in certain parts of the song where it would be more featured. So. And I'm gonna do the same here with the strings as well. And you're gonna see how that gives a nice, lusher, fuller sound. Well, I hope this video was helpful and you've picked up a couple tips or two that you can use in your projects. And as my gift to you for watching this video to the end, I wanna send you a sample pack as well as this Ableton Live session that you can download and follow along with this video. Now, if you're looking to take your next step with your music production and you're looking to have professional guidance help you do that, then I wanna encourage you to visit beatacademy.com to take advantage of all the resources I have available, the vibrant community to hold you accountable, and the mentorship opportunities to help you achieve the goals that you wanna achieve with your music production. As a matter of fact, I just wanna take this time to highlight one of my Beat Academy members and celebrate one of his wins. Beat Academy member, John Tempus. Hey everyone, after a year and a half in Beat Academy, I finally released my first song. I've waited for this my whole life, and I just wanted to say I'm really grateful to be a part of this community. All of you have helped a ton. Now, this is also following a huge onpouring of support from the community and everyone just cheering John on, helping him accomplish his goals. Now, this is someone who just started getting familiar with how to produce his own music and then joining Beat Academy to finally achieve the goal that he wanted with his music production. So if this resonates with you, then I would definitely encourage you to visit beatacademy.com for more information. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date with upcoming videos. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.